if there was a drug that mimicked what exercise did, gangbusters. They would be the richest people in the world and everyone would sit on their ass and do nothing. What happens with physical inactivity? Okay, so we'll look at what happens with physical inactivity, what happens when we introduce physical activity. So with physical inactivity, we start to see loss of muscle mass. We see macrophage infiltration into the adipose tissue. When that happens, that adipose tissue gets inflamed. That then starts to send out a whole bunch of inflammatory signals which impact everything. Cardiovascular, metabolic, hormonal, bone, cartilage, tendons, cognitive function, and then we end up with these end stage conditions that we're all treating, which can really be attributed in part to physical inactivity. So here we have our different myokines that can be secreted that can be beneficial to uh, the inflammatory process, to healing, to helping just block the actual pro-inflammatory adipokines that are coming from the adipose tissue. If there was a drug that mimicked what exercise did, gangbusters. They would be the richest people in the world and everyone would sit on their ass and do nothing. Okay, that's how powerful exercise is as medicine. And so it's super important that we try to get our patients, and this doesn't mean that patients need to become Zach and do CrossFit. <laughs> You know that you always got to pick on the CrossFit guy in the room. <laughs> it doesn't mean that they have to go from being a couch potato to doing Olympic lifting, okay? It could be something as simple as get up and walk to the mailbox twice a day because you only do that once a week, right? That's exercise. It's also a lot of mail they're not checking. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to think about how often I actually check the mail. <laughs> but I mean, so it's, and we'll talk more about this, but it's meeting patients where they're at, figuring out what they enjoy, so that way they can start doing more of it. Strength training is going to give us the biggest amount of myokines and long-term changes. But if I have a patient in my office that says, I hate strength training, I am very self-conscious, so there's the, the mental side of things, I don't feel well when I do it. I just, I absolutely hate it and always have. I'm not gonna be like, well, do it or else. <laughs> <laughs> it's then, what's the next best thing that we can do? And maybe secretly, subconsciously, I'm trying to, over the next year to two years, get them to love strength training, okay? Boom. This nice research study looked at what happens when we do regular exercise with nutritional support, both human and mouse data or rat data. We'll just call it animal data from now on. <laughs> Except for the, the bovine one, that's in the cows, yeah. But what we see is that the anti-inflammatory myokines, so things like IL-10, are going to inhibit production of TNF-alpha and we see a reduction in CRP. We see a reduction in inflammation when patients exercise, okay?